welcome back. The Herd is coming up next here on FS1. Let's head over check in with Colin Coward. Hey, Colin, what is on the show? New York Giants continue to be a fear-based organization. The Dallas Cowboys have a decision to make. I'll double down on trading Zeke and OBJ. I'm going to back him this morning on something as New York fans are crushing him. That's coming up. All right, Colin, thank you. Time for our final topic of the day. Tom Brady is still finding ways to make heads turn in the offseason. On Friday, he posted this video jumping off a cliff with his six-year-old daughter, Vivian. Brady has received a lot of backlash online for the video because of the awkward way his daughter jumps off the rock. So, Shannon, did you have a problem with this video? Yes, it's because they put the kid at unnecessary risk. Skip, I get it. You know, sometimes kids want to do things, but as a parent, this is your opportunity to step in and say, no, baby, this is too dangerous. Maybe when you get a little older. Skip, this could have gone horribly wrong. And I don't know what Tom was thinking. Everything is not meant for social, for public consumption. If you want to do something like this and it, behind the confines, I don't agree with it either way. Mm. But you don't expose, you don't put this out there like this. This could have gone horribly, horribly wrong, Skip. And mm. Tom is wrong for this one. Mm. The one thing I never do is tell parents how to parent, so I leave that up to Tom and especially to Mama Brady because I'm assuming she signed off on this because Tom went ahead and posted it. And I I don't know this for a fact, but wasn't she there in the vicinity? I, I would assume she would. Yeah. yeah. So if Mama signed off, I... I no, that's, skip, skip, look at it. Come okay. on, Skip. And then the thing is you got to realize Tom is going to hit the water first and then she lands on top of him. Mm. There's, there's too many, there, only, the, only, the only good thing that could happen, we, and it did happen, everything turned out okay, we look back 10, 15 years from now, it's like, look baby, you did mm. that. But Skip, mm. the risk does not, the, the rewards do not weigh the ri risk okay. in this matter. The one thing I always wonder about anything Brady posts is, is, is there any CGI involved? Mm -hmm. Like, did, did they doctor it in any way that, because he doctors up a lot of yeah. things, and I don't know, is he just trying to send everybody off over the edge, so to speak? But again, I don't have kids, and first of all, I wouldn't be jumping off that cliff because I don't have any use for that, period. No. But I don't know, I'm, I'm just guessing, but it, was he trying to toughen his kid up a little bit? I don't know. No, nah, you, you can toughen him up in another way than, than doing yeah. that. Maybe the, I'll recall Because Skip, they, they mistimed it. Mm. Was it like one, two, three, we jumping, or one, two? She wasn't ready. Exactly. Yep. Oh, so, yeah. Skip, and I don't know if she wasn't ready psychologically or just on time, right. but, but he had to pull her right, off. Right, right. The yeah. more you okay. see it, it actually gets worse every time I watch it. Well, uh, we'll yeah. see if he comes he out with anything. He posted later. it. He did. That okay. is it for us. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 9 30 Eastern. Right now, Colin tells you why Ezekiel Elliott showed it. Freddie Roach is back with us. Now, you've actually done some training with Reverend Jesse Jackson, and I'd love to learn more about what you guys have been doing. Yeah, he, um, he called me up one day out of, out of the blue and. Uh, <laughs> Um, said uh, this Jesse Jackson, and, and uh, he said, "I'm wondering if you can help me." And I said, "What's wrong?" And he told me he has Parkinson's, and I asked him what his symptoms were, and he didn't have so much like tremors like me or Ali had at one time. He had more uh, body motion where he, he if you could call his name, he would turn his whole body and so forth, a little more stuff. It's just another type of Parkinson's. So. And um, so uh, he says, yeah, can you help me? And I say, I think so. I say, come, can you come down to the gym? And he says, yeah. So a couple of days later, he shows up. And then um, the first day, uh, we walk up the steps. And he has a little trouble getting up the steps to the gym. And then um, eight days later, he wanted to race me up the steps. Oh, <laughs> that's great. And the thing is, we did just hand-eye coordination drills, just exercising, just uh, just uh, complete boxing workouts, and it's just a lot of hand-eye coordination, and uh, it worked really, really well for him. I mean, from day one to, to the day he went home, he, it was really, it was it was really nice to see. Wow. That he, and I told him, I said, now when you get home, don't feel sorry for yourself and sit on the couch, watch TV, and start crying. I said, go to the local boxing gym. I said, people like you, you like people, and he likes to be around people all day because uh, in my gym, he he was really, really well liked. Mm. Um, a couple of people disliked him because he said he's a sellout. I said, <laughs> I said you know, maybe that was a long time ago or something like that, but I don't really understand what they're talking about. But uh, 
Uh, but he was great to have in the gym, and yep. I, I call him up once in a while, make sure he's still working out, and he's he's having fun. And I I taught his son how to do the mitts and so forth, so he can that's great take my place, and so he has some with him at all times, wow. and it worked out really well for him. It, and um, it was it, it was like it was a really good call to get. I mean, he was really a nice, a very nice person, and everyone in the gym. Uh, Except those three loved him. <laughs> <laughs> That's great work. So back to a potential Mayweather fight. If Floyd does have the guts to fight Manny again, how would you see it unfolding this time? I see Manny being you know, a lot more aggressive in this one, and is a, a little bit more difficult for him be, because of Floyd's movement, and he, he's still very fast. Even at 42, he's quick. But um, I think that Manny's pressure, needs a pressure fight, put the pressure on him for 12 rounds, and I, I think we can win, win, win this fight easily. You, easily? Yes. As in just on points? Could, could you put him down? I think we, we, we need to put him down, actually. He's so well-liked in Las <laughs> Vegas. I, I mean, he's... You don't uh, think you can win a decision, huh? Uh, it'd be very difficult mm. to win. To, to win the decision there, but but well, wait yeah. a second. Why not fight at Jerry World or you know like <laughs> Lord ain't fighting that? outside of Vegas. Why not? Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, the thing is, it's just like he's he's a great great boxer, yes. But the thing is, I think Pacquiao's endurance and and, and pressure can be too much for him. But everybody says they want to pressure him, and they they start with that game plan. But Fred, but but Floyd has more pop than people give him credit for. He does, and the thing is, you have to. The pressure we're talking about is is really um, a very smart way to go at him. Right. Uh, it's not just walk to him and, and like yeah. Uh, because he'll lead you. He'll lead you in to trade with him. Yeah. Uh, because he will lead you into a shot. He's a very good counter puncher, mm -hmm. and he, he's you know he's an excellent boxer. I mean, you can't take that away from him. No. He's uh, one of the best boxers we've ever had. And Manny just needs to put that pressure on him. He needs to feign a lot yeah. and, and, and kind of uh, counter him. And uh, I think um, we can come up with a much better game plan than we did last time. I'm a little, um, I'm still a little bit mad at myself for not having that perfect one. But the, the shoulder didn't help. But going in healthy, both guys, I think Pacquiao takes him out. So this time, how how much would this mean to Manny to beat Floyd? What what, what did, you, you've been around him, you know him better than anybody. What does it mean in his heart and soul? I really think that me and Manny can both retire after we beat Floyd. Okay. <laughs> this, right. I mean, we can call it a day after that. We don't need, we don't need to go any further than that. I mean, he's like one of the best fighters in the world, and. Uh, uh, he got the decision last time, and it was a very close decision, even though he had, he had a bad shoulder. But Manny, 100% healthy, I think walks right through him. Does Manny dislike Floyd? I won't say that. Manny doesn't really dislike anybody. He's one of those guys. He's a likable person. I mean, even even going into this last fight, and the guy was talking a little bit and so forth, you know, he get, he get irritated a little bit and so forth. But you know, when, when it's over, he doesn't he doesn't dislike anybody. Not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna if if Manny were to beat Floyd, you know that's not the end of it. It's gonna be a rematch. This is how old are they gonna be? Yeah. Like? <laughs> but for enough money, yeah. they'd be out there fifty fighting. Yeah, Ooh. but the thing is, uh, you know, if uh, Manny wins, the, uh, the the third fight is definitely gonna be probably necessary. Yeah. And, uh, um, I I wouldn't even doubt that they have two dates in the contract. Mm. Okay. Let's make this happen. All right. Oh my gosh. Yep. It's exciting. Uh, Freddie, such good stuff. Thank you so much for joining Fred, us. I still got, some, I still got some pop in it, all right? Boy. I can still got some pop, Freddie. Thank you for sharing all the stories. Uh, you're welcome back anytime. We'll be right back. Thank you.